Hi everyone, it's Sean once again. Thank you so much for watching all of my videos. I really like dialoguing with you guys in the comment section below. Looking forward to every single video I put out there. It just puts me in a better mood when I'm able to help you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In today's video, I'm gonna answer a question, actually a series of questions that was thrown out to me by Fire Lover Number One. I'm not too sure, sure I know Fire Lover Number One personally. Um, there's about three or four of you that I actually know personally, but I, I, it doesn't really matter whether I, I know this person or not. But anyhow, this person had some questions that revolved around police and racism. And I think I'm in a, a best position to answer those questions because I have experience from both sides. I have experience on the law enforcement side. I have experience also from the private security side, the education side. I have experience of being a police watch commander as well, taking in complaints, taking in citizen complaints. So I, I understand the process. The questions or the comments that he posed, it might seem quite common to some of you. I, I totally understand his frustration. Um, I don't think he, I think he's being honest. Um, it's just the information that he provided it seems so it does seem authentic to me it really does because why else would he be providing all these um, details so we're going to cut the presentation well i'm going to divide it into different parts so in this part right now the first part has to deal with police that are perhaps over overbearing fire lover number one was assigned to a construction site um, a police officer went over there and it looks like kind of give him an attitude. He was doing his job. The security officer, if I remember, was doing his job. I think this is Ontario Police Department approached him and uh, Fire Learner One didn't like the, the, the way he was he, he was dealt with. Um, and then he called. It looks like the watch commander. He tried to complain about the situation and instead of the watch commander looking further into the issue and saying that he'll have a discussion with the officer. Um, instead of instead of doing that, what is troubling, well, besides that point, well, well, actually, let's include this. So the watch commander said, well, you should be glad that he's out there, you know, doing his job. Well, fire, number one, fire lover number one, why should he be helpful that the officer's doing his job if fire lover number one is the one that was doing his job? It doesn't make any sense. And then second, I really didn't like how that officer, the police officer, um, started questioning in an intimidating manner, fire, fire lover number one, as to why he called the watch commander um, and explain him the situation. I, I, you know, whoever this Ontario officer is, um, when you do something like that to the citizens, uh, myself as a fellow officer, I lose a lot of respect for you. So um, that's just that's just some that's something that kind of action gets people. Um, it, it wants people to it wants people to support law enforcement less and that's just my my, my opinion um, another another issue was that fire lover number one looked like he, he was assigned to some fire to some apartment complex and there was some a, fe a female um, had some type of um, it looked like she was drinking alcohol and she tells him babe come here um, I, I, I don't know if she was referring to some other guy, babe, or fire lover number one. Um, I, I, I don't know what, it, what it, I, I don't know exactly the circumstances, but it looked like she complained. And then there's an, there was another person that showed up, uh, or maybe the same female officer who identified herself as an El Monte police officer, an off duty, um, El Monte officer. And then some office off duty officer told or called the police on fire lever number one to try to get him sighted or his vehicle towed because it was in some in some lane. Um, so this is how I deal with situations like this. And I, I'm gonna be pretty frank with you right now. Just because, now I, I do work in law enforcement, just because somebody's in law enforcement, that doesn't mean that they get away with things. The, the greater the crime um, that has been committed the greater chance of you getting booked. Now, I've been in law enforcement 
19 years going on 20 years. And it's these little punks in law enforcement, like this off-duty officer, that gives everybody a bad rep. Um, being almost a 20-year veteran in law enforcement, some of these things really upset me. Now, in this in this predicament, um, I think the better course of action would be, oh, hey, that's great. You're in. Looks like you're a police officer. Thank you so much for your service community. What's your first name? Oh, it's Elizabeth. Okay, um, Elizabeth, what's, what's your last name? Oh, Gonzalez, or whatever it is. And try to get the name of the of the on-duty watch commander. And if this person um, does give you the name of the watch commander, okay, great. So I just need to call and confirm um, who you are so that I can give you a little bit of different treatment. Um, I could hook you up in the buddy system. Something to that effect. Uh, if, the, if this person refuses to show you police ID, then they're not a police officer. If this person gives you a name of the on-duty watch commander so that you can verify, you got to tell this officer, hey, well, I'm just going to verify um, who you are just so that I can give you, pref I can give you some special treatment. Um, and I do that for law enforcement. So you got to talk that way into getting them um, to, to providing the information to you. And every off-duty law enforcement officer their their goal is to not get in trouble to not to not bring attention to themselves so if you're talking to their watch commander at Almani um, at the Almani police department and this person gets attention they're not going to want that attention you guys um, I could tell you for a fact when you're off duty you're 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 off duty if also if some off duty officer approaches me if there's some type of criminal situation or or some incident going on they start badging me first I'm going to verify that they actually are I'm going to look at their ID card. Their badge means nothing. I want to see their ID card. Uh, the front, the back, I want to see the back. Um, and I want to see how, how many years of service do they have. Um, you, A lot of times, your guys that are, have, that are on probation that have one year or less or even two years or three years or five years or six years, uh, these guys are the ones that are going to give you give the problems. The 10-year vet, the 20-year vet, they don't want any problems. So they might not even, not even identify themselves as law enforcement. So that's one of the things that, that you can do is, is ask for that ID. Now, regardless, oh, by the way, okay, so if, if a law enforcement officer is, tries to take, o take over, handle a situation, cool, it's all yours. All, the situation is all yours. Here you go. And first off, you probably only have a gun, if even that. You don't have any lethal options. And... You don't have the show of authority, the command of presence, because all you have is probably a t-shirt and shorts. Nobody's going to listen to you. So in that situation, I'm not going to help you. I'm out. And I'm going to observe and report from across the street. And that's how I would deal with that situation. When I first started uh, mall security when I was 18, an LAPD officer, she badged me and says, oh, LAPD officer, um, so-and-so. I'm gonna need I need I'm gonna need your slim gym because we used to do vehicle unlocks and I was really I mean I could easily be intimidated at age 18 so here I gave it to her but what I should have what I should have did was hey look um your 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 who okay badge number okay there's your, there's your ID card cool mental memory LAPD has a lot of divisions hey what division do you work oh Rampart um, Southwest Southeast okay cool. So you know what I'm gonna do? If you're gonna badge me and um, commandeer my sli my slim gym, okay? When you leave or while you're there, I'm gonna make a phone call to Rampart Division, Southeast Southwest Division, and ask if they know this officer. And if the watch commander, and I'm gonna speak to watch commander. Watch commander says, "Well, why are you asking this information? I'm just trying to verify because this officer, she's using the slim gym, and she locked herself out of the vehicle." You know what's going to happen when this officer shows up to briefing? They're all going to make fun of her. They're going to give her a, a, a new name, um, a, a nickname for her whole career, possibly. Okay? And the same thing when you have these off-duty officers acting stupid and drunk. Call the watch commander, whatever agency they're claiming, to verify. Okay? To ver not to get them in trouble, but to verify who they are and explain what the situation is. Don't, talk to a cor don't be talking to no corporal. Um, if a sergeant answers good but what's better is when you call the following morning 
and talk to a command anybody at the command staff level, which is usually a lieutenant, captain, commander, assistant chief, and and above. Um, this person will probably stop their behavior. It just depends. When these law enforcement officers, when they begin their career, drinking is a problem. Um, every new officer that I train, I tell them to lay off the alcohol. The alcohol is going to get you in trouble. You do stupid things, you make stupid decisions, as we can we can see here. So that's one of the things I'm doing. And it, if I start getting a, an officer that has me, that starts trying to boss me around, they're not my supervisor. They're not that boss. One of the governors repealed the posse uh, comitatus law, which meant that I, that as a law enforcement officer, peace officer, I can order you to assist me with some type of law enforcement duty, usually the apprehension of somebody. That law is repealed. So really, you cannot give me an order unless it's a lawful order. Now, you guys, on, du on duty law enforcement, um, you got to treat them differently because it's possible that they can be, they can be investigating a criminal incident. And if you delay them, that's a violation of the state law. You cannot delay or resist an officer that's trying to perform his or her duties of the, of the job. Okay. Um, so I, hopefully fire lever number one, I'm starting to answer some of your questions. There's a lot of incidents that you describe of racism. The problem what I have about accusation of racism is I, I need to know further details. Was, was there another, and I, I don't know the color of your skin because you didn't mention that. That's why I was wondering, do I know you or not? Um, you didn't mention the color of your skin, your your national origin. I, I don't know that at all. And the reason why it's important is because my question is this. Are other people that have a different skin tone, born from a different country, that are placed in a similar condition as you, are they being treated differently than you? Similar circumstances. That's what I like to know. Now, if so, then you might have a good complaint, a good grounds for, for racism, discrimination. Racism in itself is not legal, but discrimination is. Discrimination is acting on your racism. You cannot, you can't discriminate though. So again, I need to know, and I'm not, I'm just asking you hypothetically, a hypothetical question to everyone else that has accusations of racism. Are people, other security officers that are in your a similar position, like you, similar situation, situated, are they being given different treatment or not? That's that's really important. And something like this, it's, it's hard to prove. It's it's hard it's hard to prove. So that's that's my stance on racism and discrimination. It does occur in private security. On on what levels? I, I don't think that it's it's at a at a high level. I don't think it's a moderate level. I still think it's a problem, but not too much. Uh, we can always do better. I I agree. So let's talk about um, so these acts of racism that that you experience, uh, fire learner fire lever number one the way you have to deal with it is deal with it um every day at a time the past you're gonna have to just let go of all those situations i'm sure there were years ago i i i don't think it's healthy to hang on to those situations let's just learn from them i will tell you though that when you work these construction sites you have to expect that law enforcement officers are going to roll up on you uh, with a higher sense of high, high sense of security higher sense of vulnerability because at these sites you get people that are stealing copper construction materials um, people that are doing illegal transactions and they the vehicles that's positioning is very similar as security officers when they're assigned to these sites I mean a lot of times it's not even it's not even a security vehicle now I think you did mention you may have mentioned it, it was a security vehicle okay I could I could see that also uh, but again, sometimes with security vehicles, uh, the officers need to really verify whether or not it is a security vehicle. So don't don't get mad at me because I'm saying that the officers need to be more careful um, and have a high sense of security, even though it's a security vehicle. It's just it's just something that that they do. Um, now, regardless, if you feel like you're being discriminated upon, you have to take action on that day. What I mean by by this is what I mean by that. On that day, you need to talk to a watch commander, um, somebody that is in charge of the shift. Try to see what the solution is going to be. If it's a stupid solution, like you should be glad he's on patrol and then that's it, 
I'm going to go back in the morning and, spe and speak to a member of the command staff um, and see what they can do about the situation. If they're going to give me a same stupid answer um, like what, what, what was just given, um, then I'm going to go higher. Actually, at that point in time, I'm going to ask for a complaint form. I would like to file a private person's or a citizen's complaint against this officer. And I'm going to include all the supervisors. I'm going to include anybody that was in charge of treating me differently. I'm naming everybody in a written complaint. When you file a written complaint, it has to be investigated. That is in the government code. If it's just a verbal complaint, it depends on the policy. But the, gov the government code demands some type of investigation. Some of you might be thinking, well, it's going to be a biased investigation. Um, it, they're still going to discriminate. Don't even don't waste your time then. That's what I have to say. You have to give the process some hope. If you don't give the process some hope, then don't do anything about it. But don't complain year as the years progress. Uh, it's until you start filing these written complaints and nothing's being done, then you have a more of a legitimate claim. Now, some of you might be thinking, I might be more biased towards law enforcement. That's not the case. This is a security, private security and investigations leadership channel. It's not a law enforcement channel. I decided not to go law enforcement on here because there's a there's a there's a lot of other channels that talk about law enforcement issues that do a better job than me. I think I'm most effective discussing private security issues because I have experience in private security and, and law enforcement. And I in, instruct at the college level and academy level as well. And for that reason, I think I am a better, I'm better suited to discuss issues that affect private security. Guys, as for this blue, blue line of silence, blue wall of silence, I started in the, in the early 2002s. Um, I got in the academy in 2001. I've been in law enforcement a very long time. Um, I am tired of these little punk officers making all of us look bad. I'm, I'm tired of it. I'm tired of it. I have had police, I had law enforcement officers in the back of my patrol unit. When they start mouthing off, I'm a police officer, I'm an officer, I'm off duty. I don't care. If you committed a crime, I'm throwing you in the back seat and I'm booking you in jail. That's the way it works. If I ever screw up, if I ever commit a crime, I expect another law enforcement officer to do, to do the same thing. I've had people say, hey, hey, brother, we're both the same. We're on the same team. You know, hook it up. No, you know what? We're not on the same team anymore. We were on the same team. But once you became a criminal, okay, you broke you you broke that barrier. You broke that silence. Now you're on this side over here. And and I actually give I give the criminal um, more respect than you as a police officer because at one point in time, the public had trust of you. They 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 gave you trust. They they let you swear to the U.S. Constitution to protect them. But you took advantage of the situation. So you're not only a criminal, you're worse than a criminal. And that's the way that's the way I view it. Okay, um, I've I've pulled over law enforcement officers in marked in marked patrol cars because they're driving stupid from other jurisdictions, and I tell them you need to drive better. You need to drive better in this jurisdiction. Do I give breaks to regular citizens who understand what they the 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 severity of their of their driving of the small infraction? Do I give them breaks? Yes. With a law enforcement officer, if this person understands um, what they did and they're and they they're educated, they understand. I might have to give them a break too. Okay, I give, I have give, I I have probably given more breaks to non law enforcement um, than actual law enforcement because there, I'm telling you, there's a point in time where where we I start losing respect for them. Um, corrections officers. Again, same thing. Um, federal officers, this, you guys, I've had them in handcuffs. Um, I've had people who I known in law enforcement. Um, we had a good working relationship. And again, and it's all drugs. I had them in the back of the car, and we get in some type of tussle, altercation at a hospital or somewhere else because this guy's trying to escape. He's trying to call me buddy, friend. Doesn't work that way. Um, you break the law, we're not we're not friends anymore. 
I hope this answers your question, fire lover number one. In summary, um, whenever something happens to you from this day forward, use this technique I'm, I'm talking about. Talk to the officer in charge. You don't get a, a response that's satisfiable, then you will th then move up and then move up. And then you think they're not, they're not doing anything, file a written complaint, okay? You get a, an officer, off to the officer is mouthing off, maybe they're drunk, intoxicated at a bar, or club, or, or at the pool. Get them identified, ask who they are. Uh, they don't wanna produ produce that police ID card? Fine, get the hell out of here, get out. I'm gonna give you a no trespass warning. So they start mouthing off again, call the cops, call the cops. You call the police, when the police arrive, I want this person given a no trespass warning and I would like a report. That way, that officer will identify this off-duty officer and there'll be a report of it. They might not give you a report, they'll give you what's called a log entry, but at least you can go back to the, the police station or the sheriff's sta sheriff station and get a copy of this record that will have that information, okay? And then you can contact the law enforcement agency where they work at, and they're going to do it. They might do an internal investigation if you file a written complaint, and they're going to be contacting this agency that handled the call and get all of those records in. Okay, that's 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 how you that's how you deal with off-duty law enforcement um, who think that they are above the law. Hope hopefully this guy hopefully this video uh, helps you guys. If you have any questions concerns. Um, content requests please let me know um and i will try to answer them i'll try to answer you guys sorry guys i'm a bit tired this is like the third video that i'm making uh there's another gentleman a subscriber his last name is chu chow it's asian he has an asian face on the icon um i think it's sammy i can't remember but he always provides good input he recommended that i do a reddit channel or subreddit. I never heard of a subreddit. I heard of a Reddit, and it's something I might look into. That way, I can post any information that I want on my um, on my platform without being uh, banned by YouTube. Not banned, but um, be demonetized or even blacklisted by, by YouTube. So thanks for the thanks for the suggestion. Okay, I really appreciate it. I probably butchered your screen name, but please, please forgive me. Okay, you guys, I'll take care. Be safe.